Oh my god, this is so cool. Oh, I love that. That's so sweet. No, I, I think it's really cute. Uh, can you play something? Do you want me to play something? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Scrap. Yeah. So this time I'm free now. Did you did you see the pentatonic score? Oh yes, yes, I did. I did enjoy that. That was good. I, uh, that's that's incredible. Every time I watch it, I just yeah. can't believe it. he's absolutely one of the most talented people I've ever seen. That was really good. He, he, he worked with he came and worked with DSO a number of times. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's something else. <laughs> That's amazing. It was amazing just to see him do that so quickly and oh, yeah. effortlessly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
welcome to worship at Salem United Church of Christ, whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on life's journey. Just a few announcements that I would like to begin with before we begin our worship service. Uh, and to my left and your right, we have our Kids Corner. Feel free to use the Kids Corner. And thank you so much to Nina, our nursery attendant, for being here today as well. So grateful for our minister, he's like Ronald O'Donnell, and our minister, like DJ Triplett. Thank you so much to Andrew Papa for being our liturgist today, and to all of you, our friends and guests, worshiping here in person and online. So, this morning, for our announcements, I would like to begin by saying happy birthday to all of our December birthday friends. If you see someone whose name is on that list, make sure that you wish them a very happy birthday. We have just a few more days, one more week, until our fruit fundraiser ends. And so make sure if you have not already placed your order to do so at this time. We are collecting our noisy offering for the very last time today, uh, going in support of our Kenyan family that we've adopted. We're sending our kids to school for one year. And the remaining of the proceeds, if we exceed the $300, we are going to be donating so that they can receive an electro electric generator so that they can have electronics and electricity as well. So thank you for all of your donations uh, in support of Jane, Rosalie, and Alice. and weave all of the positive energy 
into the shawls and blankets that we receive that then go out into the community and bless those who are in need of some care, some comfort, and some prayer. If you have any questions about the prayer shawl ministry, please see Carol in a minute. On Wednesday nights, we have Bible study from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the gathering room and also on Zoom. It is a wonderful opportunity to have conversation, discussion about the upcoming week's texts, and also to hear different interpretations of the holy words that we read and study together. On the first Fridays, we have the LGBTQ Community Fellowship Gathering. We just had one last Friday. Thank you for all who came out, and if anyone is interested in learning more information, it is certainly a, a group that socializes together, but it's also a spiritual group as well. We do pray together. We hold space for one another. And our friends as well. and really wanting some community fellowship that's specific to spirituality and being a part of this community, please see myself or Wayne Burling uh, for more information. We are online. We are on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and we have a website. So if you are not following, please do so by either scanning the barcode on the screen ahead of you or by going to those websites and checking out our pages. Thank you so much for all the ways that you support Salem's ministry in person and online. And now, without further ado, let us turn our hearts and our minds over into a spirit of worship and join together with our call to worship. Please join me in our call to worship. Blessed be the Lord God of hope. For the hope that is truth eternally. Blessed be the Lord God of peace. For the peace that surpasses all understanding. Let us worship God. For God whose life gives us hope and peace. Let us worship God. For God who sends us light and life. Let us worship God together. Please rise in body and spirit of evil and join us in singing, O oh Lord, how shall I meet you? In the hymnal on page 11. Yeah, 
in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. If you are joining us online, I invite you to leave a comment of peace in the comment section. If you are here in the sanctuary, I invite you to friends and neighbors. The peace of Christ be with you. So, I have some other 
friends as well. We don't know quite yet. So, don't let the box fool you. They didn't come from Panera. They came all the way from Bethlehem. And this is their spot that they're going to be all for the rest of the Advent. Okay, so when you help me set this up, this is going to sit here for like three more weeks. We have to be really, really creative. So, this is the stable. Do you know what a stable is? <clears throat> what is a stable? It's a place where they keep horses? Yes! It's kind of like a barn. It's like an outdoor living space for animals. Did you know that when Jesus' parents were about to bring Jesus into the world, they couldn't find it anywhere to go? Every hotel, every house, every cottage, every mansion was taken. They didn't have those, you know, trying to put it in context. But there was no room for them anywhere. So guess what they had to do? So we already know what's in a barn, but what's this? A horse could be a mule. I think it's a horse because of the hair. So we also have can you put that in there for me? So that now we have some other folks. gifts so that they could see the newborn baby and also offer gifts. So these are the three wise men. Can you put the wise men in there for me? And if they don't fit right in there, you can put them like right next to the manger. Here, I'll move this. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's wonderful. Oh, fantastic. So now we have a couple other people we should add, right? Who are we missing? Mary. Who else? Joseph. It's a fairy. We have a fairy. <laughs> they... <laughs> All right. So the angel is actually right here. So the story goes a little something. But Mary was told that she was going to have a baby. And Joseph married her, uh, and they decided to go to find a safe place to have the baby. And the angel then, right here, came and told the people, do not worry, I bring you good news. There's someone that's so bright that's going to offer light and hope and peace and joy, so don't worry. And guess what? You'll find a sign because you'll see the baby wrapped in a blanket and laying in a manger. So where's Jesus then? We don't see the baby. Not here. Well, guess what? We're going to have to wait until Christmas Eve. And then we will be able to Christmas Eve is the day that we will celebrate the birth of Jesus. Um, 
And we'll also celebrate a little bit on Christmas Day as well. Where are you going to be on Christmas Eve? Shall graze, 
Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw with the moths. shall play the whole of the ass, and the weaned child shall put its hands on the adder's den. This will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Our second lesson is from Romans chapter 18, verses 4 through 13. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him, the Gentiles shall come. God will you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please rise, body and spirit of Abel, and join us in singing Banner of Hope 75 and sing verses 1 and 3. Isaiah spoke when he said, 
the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around the Jordan were going out to him. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Therefore, bear fruit worthy of repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I. And I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with the unquenchable fire. Here ends the reading of our words for the day. May God bless the reading and the hearing, the pondering of these holy and sacred words. Please pray with me. Holy One, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity to stand before your people. I ask that you move Lawrence out of the way of having to be present to speak that which would come from your heart and your lips, dear God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you give us strength and you redeem us. Amen. Well, first, this morning, I would like to reiterate a welcome to everyone, and I would also like to say a special hello and welcome to Reverend Debbie Schuderman, who is here today, and also uh, Reverend Marilyn, who is also here. Thank you so much for being here, and Steve, welcome this morning as well. Uh, it's so great to have you all in worship with us this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we are at the, believe it or not, second Sunday in Advent, and today we are talking about peace. Have you ever cried out for peace? Have you ever prayed for peace? Well, as a child, I cried out for peace a lot. I prayed for peace a lot, and the interesting thing is, is that I never found it, because I thought it was somewhere else. Let's take a look at our scripture lessons for the day. In the first lesson, the prophet Isaiah presents a prophetic text that shares with us that out of the line of Jesse, that a descendant of Jesse who is the same Jesse, who was the father of King David, the same David that was the little boy that vanquished a giant with a slingshot and a few pebbles, grew it to be the greatest king over all of Israel, that same Jesse would also be the descendant of one who is coming, the one who would be coming to restore peace, the one who would make it so that the world would resemble more of the Garden of Eden, where the lion would be laying down with the lamb. There would be peace. Our second lesson reiterates some of the same prophecy that connects the one who would be coming with the descendant, Jesse, and says that this person who is coming will also as reiterated in our first lesson, restore peace. And whatever you do, 
you are supposed to not only welcome that kind of something to get it. In our gospel lesson, however, John the Baptist is coming and he is preaching a message saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. The one that the prophet Isaiah talked about, who happens to be John's cousin, is coming and he's going to be more powerful than even I. But we have to repent. When there were some Pharisees and Sadducees who came to John to be baptized and to receive the gift of repentance and baptism, John stopped them. Because it isn't that easy. It's not so much about declaring the words as it is about embodying them. John says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I, so much so that I am unworthy to put on his shoes. But that kind of power, that kind of peace, you're going to have to do some work to get that. Because if you don't do work to get that, you will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Well, that seems kind of scary. That seems kind of agonizing, doesn't it? Let's just turn back to that first place that I invited you to think about when we started. Peace. Have you ever cried out for peace? Well, I did, and I didn't find it. You see, as a child, I suffered a lot of trauma. And I had night terrors, and I'd wake up in the middle of the night, and I would be screaming out, except there would be no voice. It was complete silence. And I didn't speak for quite a while, actually. And psychologists say that sometimes trauma can stun a person into silence. But I would be feeling as though I was screaming out, crying out for peace. And one day, my grandmother came to me in the bed, and she, she held me, she picked me up, and she started rocking me back and forth. And she started speaking peace over my life. She just started saying words that made me feel more peaceful. And I went from being a child who cried out for peace and it didn't work because I had no voice. It literally didn't come out. To being someone who, like John the Baptist, had a grandmother came and said, this is what you do, this is what you must do to find peace. She modeled for me that it wasn't about the crying out for peace that was going to bring it, but it was about speaking the peace that was going to bring it. In other words, I went from saying, to then being able to say, I am peace. I have peace. I know peace. I'm surrounded by peace. My relationships have peace. My family is peaceful. start to declare it instead of begging and asking for it, you realize something different. You realize what John the Baptist was trying to say all along, that I can point you into the way, but you have to enter into it in order to receive it. You have to step into the waters of baptism. You have to open your heart and repent. You have to receive all that is in Christ. But that's not all. There's some stuff that you have to give up. 
in Wednesday night's Bible study, we talked about the word repentance. And someone asked what the difference between repentance was and merely saying, I'm sorry. Repentance is turning away. Repentance is acknowledging, certainly, that there is a wrongdoing, a grievance, a sin, a way that you've missed the mark, and it's a commitment to go a different way. When John is inviting us into repentance in this story, it's not because we're all terrible sinners and going into a pit of fire underneath the earth called hell. It's not because you all have done terrible things and you all are doomed and damned and condemned. That's not why we are invited to repent. I wasn't invited to repent as a child for the harm that was placed upon me. But I was invited to adopt another mindset, another way of living, another way of being. And that is the gift that Jesus gives us another way of being. But we have to actively receive that way of being. Just as Paul addressed the Christians in Rome and told them that they must become a servant of Christ, we too must become a servant of or it committed to the way and the lifestyle of Jesus Christ. The way and the lifestyle of Jesus Christ is peace. The way and the lifestyle of Jesus Christ is peace. So how do you find peace? I didn't find peace when I cried out because my voice was not there. My spirit was covered in darkness, not because I was a terrible sinner, but because I was so put upon and so wounded and unable to see the light of Jesus until someone, my grandmother, shined that light for me. We are Christians. We are followers of Jesus. Ours is the job to manifest that light so that other people will be led to Jesus. Perhaps you're not like my grandmother, but perhaps you have a light of your own that you can shine in a way that will bring light and hope and joy and peace into this world. Just as we learn in our children's message that we all have a light that we carry, we all have a gift inside of us that no one can take says to let your light shine so that everyone can see it. So how do you let your light shine? Maybe there's a connection between how you let your light shine and how you find peace. How you manifest peace. How you live a life of peacefulness. So how do you find peace? I, I want to point out someone that I didn't uh, prep before this, so it's totally putting her on the spot, but she is one of the most brilliant and gifted and artistic people that I've ever met, and that's a lot, that's saying a lot because you all are brilliant and gifted and artistic people, uh, but Miss Kathy, my goodness, I have seen some of, of the amazing things that she has created uh, and I am just in awe. Like, I can sew, like I can take a needle and a piece of thread, and I can put two pieces of things together and make a stitch. I can hem some pants, but when I tell you that Miss Kathy creates creations uh, in quilts that should be hanging in art galleries around the world, and she shakes her head, but I have never seen someone quilt with such precision and creativity, but it brings her peace, and that's why it looks so good. It's the same when I think about Miss Sharon and the decorations and the props that she helps us with all the time for our stage and our altar. 
because it brings peace. I think about how and coaches, folks like me, who before <laughs> two months ago couldn't carry two in that bucket. And it's because it brings you peace. There's a point in the service, and I don't know if you'll all be able to remember what I'm talking about, but it was a few weeks ago, there was a point in the service when Alana started playing, and we all kind of came into this same energy. And it's like even the little ones were like, yay! They were so excited. And it's that peace. It's because you let your light shine. We need prophetic texts like Isaiah to tell us that trouble won't last always. That someone is coming. That peace is possible. That the light in you, even if it has been dimmed by circumstance, can bring warmth and peace and light to a broken and healing world. And in the same way that Paul invites those Christians in Rome to follow after, seek after, run after the lifestyle of Jesus, we are also invited to run after it, seek after it. If you have disease, discomfort, you're lacking peace of mind, you're anxious, you're worried about how this is going to happen or how that is going to happen, or you're worried about something that you don't want to happen. There are ways that we can quiet our mind, invite in peace, embrace the peace that is within. need as much of the self-help books and the tapes and CDs like my generation and other generations did. Um, Rain, actually, our friend Rain here, had an app that tells them when to meditate, tells them when to breathe. Just, it's amazing. Like, if I had that at 12 years old, just take a moment, breathe. <laughs> Can you imagine how different life would be? I think there's something to be said for repentance because there is an opportunity for us to turn away from wrongdoing or from things that don't bring peace. But I don't want us to end with repentance. I want us to end with repair. Because to repent means that we turn away from something that maybe wasn't going in the right direction. But it's not enough to turn away from the sin. In order for there to be peace on earth, in order for us to be restored back to that place like Eden, we have to repent of the wrongdoing that not only we have seen, but that we have observed, that we've witnessed. And we have to commit to repairing so that peace can be restored. I would like to leave you with this. In the book of John, Jesus says, my peace I give to you. My peace I leave for you. How do you embrace the peace of God? How do you embrace the gift? And when you embrace it, how do you express it? How do you share your life? How do you find your peace? Whether it is peace of mind, peaceful circumstances, peaceful relationships, we are called into a relationship with Jesus Christ not because we're horrible sinners that need to be made well, but because we are beautiful creatures of the Creator who seeks to be in right relationship with each of us. And that relationship can be restored 
once we repent and turn away of everything that disconnects us from God, and once we commit to a lifestyle of peace, to let your lights shine, friends, whether it's through music, through quilting, through golf, through theater, through whatever it is, let your light shine. Amen.
what we are excited by and what we are dreaming about. You know the goals, you know the to-do lists, you know the ideas, you know the questions, and you take all of them. As we lay these things on the foot of your altar, God, we ask that you restore our peace that you give us the ability to see your light even in dark circumstances, that you send your angels with messages of peace, messages of hope, so that we too can hold on just a little while longer. God, for those to whom you send us, we ask that the light that shines from within us is so bright that they see you in us and in what we do. Help us to let our lights shine and to be peaceful people so that we can live lives of flourishing, wholeness, joy. Heal the broken spaces and places in our world for those grieving and suffering violence, God, we ask for your peace. For those living in poverty or under-resourced, God, we ask for your peace. And for the light inside of us that we get to share, and the myriad of talents that we have, and the gifts that we share, we give you thanks. And God, we know that there are sometimes no words for what we feel, for what we need. And so at this time, we lift our hearts to you are with us. God is with us, and God hears and receives our prayers. And now, at this time, let us join our voices together, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you for your prayers this morning. Let us continue throughout the week in a spirit of prayerfulness. At this time, I would like you to join me in our offering response. Because having received new life through the generosity of God and the hope that Christ brings, let us give joyfully and abundantly that we may be called God's generous people. All good gifts come from God. Oh God.
do I have some little helpers that would like to help me collect our noisy offering for this morning? Join me in prayer. 
Search our hearts, O oh God, as we prepare to receive your holy meal. Remove any hatred or sin or negative energy, and forgive us for our shortcomings. Purify us so that in our sharing of this sacred meal, that we can receive the gifts of your presence. Bless these elements of wine and bread that are your covenant and life for us. Amen. <clears throat> On the night that Jesus was betrayed by those who feared and killed him, he took bread after giving thanks. He broke it and said, take and eat. This represents my body, my life, my ministry, which I have given for you. And after dinner, in the same way, represents my covenant, my promise that I am pouring out for you with my blood, that I will be with you always. Jesus said, every time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, I want you to do so, remembering me. At this time, I invite those who wish to receive the elements to rise in body and spirit and to come down the center aisle where Wayne and I will be there with two sets of elements. We will have pre-sealed elements as well as unsealed uh, but prepared elements of red, gluten-free, and uh, glutinous, <laughs> and also uh, wine and grape juice. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us now receive together.
Let us pray together. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith. Increase our love for one another and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us say our mission together. Let us go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, my friends, blessed be the one who saves, who gives peace of mind, restoration, and joy creator, redeemer, and sustainer. May this same mind be in you that is in Jesus Christ, that is in Christ Jesus. May the peace, the restoration,